Hello, how's it going? In today's video, I want to talk about DMZ and zombies over the next year. So what's coming up? What do we think's happening? What do we know is happening so far? There's going to be a lot of speculation in this. I don't have any kind of secret information or behind the scenes kind of information at all. This is going to be a lot of speculation and explanation of the things that we already know. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. So first of all, let's talk about the facts. Let's talk about what we know about DMZ for next year. Nothing. No, that's it. We don't know anything about what's happening with DMZ next year. There was an event for Modern Warfare 3 that some content creators got invited to. In that, Charlie Intel specifically asked what's happening with DMZ, and they said, we're not talking about it at this time. They mentioned Warzone a few times, and as people always remind me, Warzone does include Battle Royale, DMZ, Resurgence, Plunder. All of those are part of Warzone. But generally, when people say Warzone, they just mean Battle Royale. Warzone was mentioned a couple of times. They talked about the fact that there's going to be a new map and the new Zombies experience is going to be on this new map. And we've seen like one screenshot of it from the Zombies part where you can see that it's in, like it's got some Arabic on the sign. Apparently, according to Charlie Intel, it's the Mexican, the Las Almas map, but like as in the outline of it, but replaced with, so it's a Middle Eastern location. I don't know how all that works. But anyway, there's a new map for Warzone. We know the Warzone integration with all of the new movement and all of that stuff isn't going to happen until the beginning of season one so that'll probably be a month or so after the game comes out that's when we're going to start getting all of the warzone stuff um beyond that we don't really know anything this event wasn't about warzone but no mention of dmz whatsoever now when it comes to zombies we know that there is a zombies mode we know treyarch have been working on it um the official sort of like post about it from call of duty said ready up for an open world pve extraction survival zombies experience so when they say pve extraction survival just pve not fighting other players and extraction i think they really mean like outbreak and that's what the people at this event seem to be agreeing on that it's kind of similar to outbreak that you'll be going in completing objectives maybe completing missions and stuff like that and then choosing to extract at some point or maybe you'll be forced to extract at some point and it says you're going to be doing a survival zombies experience against some of the biggest enemies in Call of Duty history. Now, when it says that, it's you can read it two ways. It could be Call of Duty history as in enemies from the past. So like the big monsters that we fought in Black Ops Cold War. Or it could be like just bigger than anything that we've had before. So maybe, you know, be fighting lots of kaiju style monsters in it. Then they said there's a Dark Aoife zombie story set in the Modern Warfare universe. So for anyone who doesn't know, Dark Aoife is kind of the Black Ops Cold War vanguard part of zombies. You've had an old story, like you've had some old stories, the Aoife storyline, the Chaos storyline. This is kind of a new storyline that does have some callbacks to what happened before and some characters are uh, sort of shared between them. But it's not directly linked to the older ones it's not like they're going all the way back to that but they've said in the modern warfare universe so it's kind of how the dark ether affects that i don't really know whether canonically the modern warfare universe and the black ops universe and everything are combined uh you know the vanguard universe whether they are definitely the same place someone in the comments can probably correct me on that but it sounds like they're doing a kind of a new take on it of like okay how does the dark ether affect this modern warfare universe I wouldn't necessarily expect to see like Samantha Maxis and Peck and everyone come into this, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Then it also said team up with other squads versus massive hordes. So we know in this new zombies mode that there's going to be other player teams. There's going to be other groups of players and you're going to be teaming up with them. You're not going to be able to fight them like you did in DMZ. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then complete missions, survive and extract. I think it's interesting they said complete missions, not objectives. In Black Ops Cold War, we had the outbreak mode where you went in and you completed lots of objectives kind of as they popped up and you had one main objective on each map. It seems like this is going to be something different. This is going to be a different kind of experience, maybe where you're choosing missions, then going in to try and complete them again like DMZ. Charlie Intel had a bit more information about it from the event. They said, in the new Modern Warfare Zombies, while you'll be with other squads in the main gameplay, Treyarch confirmed that there will also be a part of the mode that teleports your team to a separate area to battle zombies for more cinematic intel and rewards. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's like, you know, the hub map. And they have said elsewhere that it's going to be happening on the Warzone map. So I assume the Warzone map's kind of the hub. And then maybe there'll be like portals and stuff that you go through them. And then you're kind of in an instance, like your team will just be going through that instance and then fighting a boss or something like that. That makes sense to me. Um, then Charlie Intel had a bit more information. They said, 
Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, it's basically DMZ plus Outbreak, it's PvE only, played on the new Warzone map, four player squads with up to 24 players in total, so we're going to have six squads. Buy stations, ammo depots, wall buys, mystery boxes and pack a punch is going to be there. You can exfil with rewards, I'm not entirely sure what that means, like whether you're going to be able to like go get weapon skins or something like that or whether it's going to be like DMZ and you get money and stuff and some objects unlock new upgrades, not really sure. Then a cinematic story, part of the Treyarch Zombies storyline. So it is part of that storyline, um, but just obviously a different era. Now, at the end of the Treyarch Zombie storyline in Black Ops Cold War, there was some, you know, like teleporting away and appearing in different places. So it could be, and lots of people getting arrested. So it could be that it's kind of continuing that, but, you know, a few decades later. We'll see. But anyway, so that's what we know. That's kind of the sort of official information we have about DMZ Zombies. Now to do a bit more speculating about what I think's happening. I'm of the opinion that it's not that they just haven't talked about DMZ because they're not talking about it yet. I think DMZ's going. I think DMZ, not just the, like, oh, they're not going to update it anymore. I don't think it'll be an option in the Warzone launch anymore. I think DMZ will completely end and go away. And the reason for that, I think, is just that it's quite expensive and it's not that popular. Um, DMZ seems like it would be super expensive to make. You know, there's a lot of things like extra voice lines. There's lots of weird mechanics in it that don't feature anywhere else in the rest of the game. Um, they have to do loads of work, constantly updating it, giving people new missions and stuff like that. It just seems like it's a lot of effort and obviously keeping the servers running. And in Call of Duty history, they've tried lots of new modes. And if those modes don't, aren't incredibly successful, they kind of abandon them. Because bear in mind, you know, Call of Duty has tens of millions of players, maybe hundreds of millions of players. For something to be worth their time, it has to get new people playing. People who wouldn't normally be playing Call of Duty have to come into the ecosystem so they're buying battle passes and they're buying cosmetics and stuff like that. Um, and I don't think DMZ's done that, to be honest. You know, you look at the history of Call of Duty and they've reinvented zombies loads of times, they've reinvented spec ops loads of times. We've had the raids recently. We've had things like Blackout. We've had things like um, Outbreak in Cold War Zombies. We've had things like Gunfight, Fire Teams, uh, the various like war modes and things like that. We've had loads of modes come and go and they all kind of get abandoned after a year because they're just not that huge. Like They don't bring new people to it. Even zombies, which did persist for quite a long time, like the round-based zombies mode, was constantly getting reinvented and at times cut down. You know, it grew quite a lot and then it got cut down. They abandoned the idea of doing like CGI cinematics, which are obviously very expensive to create and started doing it so when you finished it you just got like pictures to look at um, and then obviously they cut it back further and further so Black Ops Cold War we didn't get many maps and they weren't like unique maps like in Black Ops 4 we had these incredible unique maps like the Titanic and the Colosseum and stuff and then Black Ops Cold War it was all kind of locations that were used elsewhere in the game um, and then Vanguard Zombies obviously it was really really cut back so it seems like Zombies wasn't even enough of a big thing to kind of that from their point of view to bring people in i don't think dmz has moved a needle on that at all i think most of the people who play dmz are probably people who were playing warzone and just prefer dmz um and you know if you do play dmz and you go in solo at the same time as a friend you'll probably get in the same game of them which makes me think there aren't that many games running at a given time and i think that's where a lot of the connection problems and the poor quality connections have come from in dmz over the last few months is I just don't think there's that many people playing. And if you were there, if you were working for Activision or Raven or Infinity Ward or whoever it is that actually works on DMZ, if you were looking at those graphs and you were like, okay, the amount of money we're spending in DMZ is at least constant, if not going up as they're expanding the mode and adding new things to it. But then the number of players is going down and you've got information that those people who are playing the game are actually just playing Warzone anyway. So they're not new people coming in to buy the Battle Pass, coming in to buy cosmetics. You'd probably just look at it and be like, mm, what's the point? What's the point of doing more of that? Now, this new mode obviously does sound quite a lot like DMZ. This new zombies mode does sound quite a lot like DMZ. The big differences are that it seems like it's only got one proper map, you know, the war zone map. It's entirely like, you know, fighting against zombies and monsters and things like that. You're not fighting against armies. And it's entirely PvE. So you're not going to be fighting against other players. Those are the big differences. And I think I know why they would do that. I don't think it's just that, you know, oh, people who play DMZ have been crying about having their experience ruined by PvPers. 
Um, I think it's much more that there's just not enough content for PvE players right now. So think about, there's two kinds of Call of Duty players. At least in my mind, there's two types of Call of Duty players. There are the PvP players. That's probably the biggest group of Call of Duty players. They're the people who play 6v6 multiplayer or they play Warzone. Some of them are the sorts of people that just want to go on shipment 24-7 and grind out camos. Some of them are the sort of people that want to play search and destroy and get interested in ranked and things like that. But they're the people who just like having fresh gameplay all the time. They're always playing against other people, trying to beat other people, trying to do better than other people. Um, and that's where they get the kicks from. They enjoy that PvP. And then you get the PvE players. These are the people who buy Call of Duty for the campaigns. And believe it or not, there are people that just buy Call of Duty for the campaign and don't touch the rest of it. They're the people that used to buy it for zombies. Um, they're the people that maybe have tried out Spec Ops. They tried out the raids. And then they probably tried out DMZ. But DMZ is this weird kind of in-between ground where you have PvP and PvE stuff. And the PvP players, I think a lot of them found DMZ quite boring. I know I've played with people like I got Broken Machine to play some DMZ once. And it was kind of like, oh, this is this is quite slow. You know, compared to playing Warzone, the pace of DMZ is much, much slower. It's much more chilled. And a lot of those PvP players can get kind of bored by that. And the PvE players who, you know, I, I know there's this characterization that PvP players are like hardcore COD players and PvE players are all people, just casuals or people who don't care about the game or anything like that. I don't think that's true. I think it's just a different mindset. PvP players want to prove that they're good at Call of Duty for other people and they like the fast pace and they like being able to like constantly have like different games. And I think the PvE players like something that's a bit more controlled. They like something that they can master a little bit more. So, you know, you see in the zombies community, there's some very hardcore zombies players who like doing speed runs and high rounds and stuff like that. And they like mastering something, you know, they like having a sort of set sandbox that they can work out all the rules, work out how it all fits together and then just do it the best they possibly can. And they like that sort of predictability. They like being able to keep doing something again and again, but getting better and better and better at it until they know exactly how it all works and they've kind of perfected it. That's not to say that they're, they're more casual than PvP players. Like, definitely not. I think it's just that it's a different kind of mindset. And when they came together in DMZ, I don't think either side was necessarily that happy because the people who wanted to perfect stuff, the people who wanted to, you know, just progress through something and play that way, the sort of zombie style of gameplay in DMZ, were constantly having players attack them, constantly having players mess up their plans, mess up their missions for them and stuff like that. And the PvPers were just a little bit bored. Now, the PvP players in Call of Duty are pretty well served, aren't they? They're pretty well provided for. I know people who like 6v6 will probably disagree with that over the last couple of years, but they get a lot of different modes. There's a lot of different modes in the main game. So, you know, you've got the base multiplayer, you've got ranked, you've got things like gunfight being added in, party games, stuff like that. And you've got Warzone, and within Warzone, you know, you sometimes have Plunder, um, and you've got Resurgence and Battle Royale. There's loads of different ways to play. I think lots of people who play PvP in Call of Duty, and this might be a controversial thing to say, I think they're quite happy. I think, like, they're quite happy with the type of content they get and the sort of cadence of content. So those people are still playing the game. The people who were playing the game two years ago are probably still playing the game now. The PvE players, on the other hand, campaigns have been really hit or miss over the last few years. The only one I've really enjoyed, and again, controversial opinion, is Vanguard. I really liked the Vanguard campaign. Um, I didn't really like the Modern Warfare 2019, Modern Warfare 2, or the uh, Black Ops Cold War campaigns very much. Obviously, Black Ops 4, we didn't even have a campaign. And then the people who played Zombies, we had a good, what I thought was a good Zombies mode in Black Ops 4. And then Black Ops Cold War, we didn't have many maps. Obviously, Modern Warfare 2019, it wasn't there at all. Vanguard Zombies, we had a terrible Zombies mode that was just awful and had very, very bare bones content. And then Modern Warfare 2, again, no Zombies. You've had Spec Ops, I don't think, you know, I don't think there was enough variety, there wasn't enough replayability in the Spec Ops missions in Modern Warfare 2, so I haven't really seen anyone taking much of an interest in them. The raids, I know some people really enjoyed them. I personally didn't think they were that great. I kind of thought if you cut all of the raids down and put them in, put the best bits into one raid, it kind of would have made one okay raid. Um, they were just too dragged out, too repetitive, too tedious. And, I, you know, again, I haven't seen the community really grab hold of them. I think Call of Duty is kind of losing that player base or just not attracting as much of a player base there as they wanted. There's just not enough people who really like that PvE content. There's not enough for them to attract them to the game. So I think they've looked at that and have said, okay, multiplayer will hold course. We'll keep Warzone going. 
We'll keep ranked going. We'll keep 6v6 going. Kind of double down on some of that. Try and make 6v6 a bit better for the people who really are into that. So, you know, you're getting lots of maps. You're getting the Modern Warfare 2 maps. You're getting, like, all of the movement and stuff like that that people wanted. But now they're trying something new specifically for those PvE players. And they're not making the mistake of trying to hit both markets like they did with DMZ. Instead, they're just being like, okay, this is just for PvE players. We're going to give you zombies. It's going to be a big mode where you can play with lots of your friends. You can have lots of different teams and stuff like that. You're going to have the missions. You're going to have like a big map to explore. All of that fun stuff. But there's no PvP. You're just playing with other people. And, you know, I think there's a chance that will do really, really well. I do worry a little bit that it's going to get stale quickly. And one of the big problems with Outbreak, I thought Outbreak was an incredible mode. Like, I genuinely thought in Black Ops Cold War, the Outbreak Zombies mode was just a fantastic addition to it. It was so much more accessible for people who were kind of interested in zombies, but they didn't want to learn Easter eggs. They didn't want to have to, like, commit to getting a big group of people together. They didn't want to have to spend ages just running the same little bits over and over again. It was super accessible. Anyone could drop into it. It kind of played a little bit like Warzone. You know, it had some of the same mechanics and stuff like that. So I think people found that an easier way into zombies. But for me, the problem of Outbreak was that it was too easy for too long. I don't mind those games being easy at the beginning. I think that's a really good idea to make it as accessible as possible. But if you were playing it and you wanted a bit of a challenge, it took way too long when you started a new roundup to get to the point where it was starting to be challenging. And with Outbreak, once you kind of knew what you were doing, it never got challenging. Like you could just keep on playing for absolutely ages and get to some ridiculous rounds and stuff like that. So I would really like to see them do something with this new zombies mode where either it's a difficulty setting thing or whether it's something where, you know, you can do stuff to the teleporter to skip many, many rounds ahead and make it so the games on average last, you know, 20, 25 minutes, a similar amount of time to DMZ. But within that time, it gets super hard. And then the really hardcore players, they'll be able to get to really hard levels within 20 minutes and then see how far they can push it. In my mind, once it gets to like 20 minutes, it should be near impossible. So normal players are just like, yeah, we've got to get out. We've got to extract when it gets to that point. But then really hardcore players will have something to try and work on, try and be like, okay, can we survive past that? Can we get to half an hour? Can we get 40 minutes? Instead of it being like Outbreak was, where it was like, can we get to, you know, 50 hours? Um, where it got kind of a bit tedious like that. But I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. So let me know in the comments. What do you think? What do you want from this zombies? Are you going to be sad if they are using this to replace DMZ entirely? I personally, I just can't imagine them having DMZ and zombies at the same time. I just don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that would work very well. I think, again, they'd be sort of cannibalizing their own user base and spending lots of money creating two modes that are kind of competing a little bit. I'll be sad if DMZ goes. Of course, it's done really well for my channel and stuff like that. But I'm happy to kind of pivot over to making some zombies content as long as this new zombies mode is actually good and better than what we had in Vanguard. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, don't forget to like. It will help me out a bunch. Subscribe, turn your notifications on, all that stuff. And I'll see you soon. Goodbye.